Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I here make scrunchies and bows. I've been doing so for 10 years now. In today's video, I'm going to be rolling up a bunch of fabrics onto boards and also having a couple chats. And before I get too ahead of myself, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content. So, as the title might say, <laughs> I had a viral video. I actually think it killed my Instagram. So this viral video was a little while ago now. I think I posted it probably mid 2022. It was when my Instagram was having a massive boom in followers. So I had one viral video that did really well. I got like lots of orders from it and I got a lot of my ideal clientele. I know what you're thinking. How can I be sad about a viral video? Surely a viral video is amazing and it will do wonders for your channel or for your growth and for your business. Business. In my experience, a viral video doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be helpful. Even the numbers that you see on like social media platforms doesn't mean that people get orders like every single day and are making hundreds of thousands of dollars like you know every year. They could just still be small time. So I had a lot of videos go semi-viral or viral between the years of 2021 and 2023. I had lots of content that I was posting. I was posting almost daily, just lots of different trending audio pieces. I was actually speaking to the camera. My strategy for 2023 and 2024 has been literally just taking snippets from my YouTube videos and reposting just because it is saving me a lot of time and I'm not too focused on having more viral videos like I did back in 2021 and 2022. So if you're wondering why it went viral, yeah, it was more like the ones that were trending sounds. I was actually making these videos for the sounds, staying up to date with trends. So if you do want to go viral, I'll suggest, highly suggest doing that because it does work and you have to be consistent. What I found with going viral, my first one went viral. I think it got maybe a few million, maybe two million views in the first month. And I got a bunch of followers. I went from like 15K followers in January of 2021 to, and then by the end of 2022, I was at 90k so within the span of almost 24 months I jumped like 80,000 followers and I was well on the way to hit 100k so somewhere between there I had two massive viral videos on Instagram and the first viral video was great I had lots of people that were following me because they liked my stuff which was great I have two ideal clienteles uh, that follow me. Obviously the people that actually want to buy scrunchies and like hair accessories. And then the other is people that are like me. They are small business owners. They want tips and tricks and advice. They want to see what I'm doing, but they also like to comment. They like to like stuff. They're not just stalking me and following me for that. <laughs> that first video, I did receive quite a few orders and a lot of followers from it. And then I think it was maybe two months later, I went viral again. I will post like the video here. It was just like a very simple TikTok that I made, super basic. But when this one went viral, it definitely got shown to all the wrong type of people. It was not my ideal clientele. It was people that were following me that did not want to purchase off me. Like I didn't have like any orders from it, but it stunted my growth for months. I stopped growing and I just couldn't grow. And my orders slowed right up because when I was posting stuff, it was going into all the people that I guess were following me to, I don't know, just following me just cause they had no interest in my stuff. So they weren't liking, they weren't interacting with my stuff. And it really damaged my Instagram for a long time. It took at least six months to bring it back and to actually have my followers and orders and stuff trending upwards. I think a lot of people don't really think about that. Like they just think, oh, you know, my big breaks if my video goes viral and I'll get so many followers and it'll be great. But followers don't actually equate sales. You still need people to be interested in what you're making and actually want to buy from you. But if you have a viral video and these people are just following you, I guess to just stalk and aren't actually interested in buying from you, they're not interacting with any of your posts, anything like that, it can really stunt your growth. There was a really long time gap in there that I was really struggling with this content. Like it just wasn't getting seen. The algorithms probably changed since then but it was really hard. And I suppose there isn't really a way that you can stop that from happening. It's just the algorithm does what it wants and will show 
your stuff to whoever it wants, but you just gotta hope, I guess, that it gets into the right viewers. When it did go viral, I didn't actually get many nasty comments or anything, but I have seen other people's content go viral and it really goes into the wrong sort of people and clientele, like where people are just so mean and nasty in the comments. So I've been really lucky in that sense that anything that I've posted, it just hasn't got into the people that are nasty like that. And I'm very grateful for that. You might be wondering how I fixed it though, because as I said, I wasn't growing for months. I was really struggling getting views. I was really struggling getting people viewing my story, people viewing my, my reels, everything like dipped. It just went like this and then all of a sudden, plummeted, which isn't great when you're trying to show everyone what you're doing and you're trying to get what you're making out to the people that actually want to see it. And sometimes when those new followers follow you and they just, they're not interacting, it can really damage like who's seeing your stuff. Here are my tips on how to sort of get out of that little rut that you might find yourself in. And also a tip that I wish I did way earlier on. So how I did it, I did stop posting for a little while because it was disheartening seeing so much of the stuff I was actually creating specifically for reels, just going to waste sort of thing. Like I just wasn't getting the views that I was previously and it felt like I was doing it for nothing. So it was disheartening to see that happen, but I did come back and this is what I did. Instead of the super viral trending audios and like reels based on those audios, I decided to take snippets from my YouTube channel and post them. So that was like a lot more behind the scenes. It was a lot more of my own audio, uh, like from the sewing machines or just from like, you know, doing this with the fabric cutting all the fabrics and stuff. And I found like that went really well. I was still finding it really hard to grow, but I did, I ended up growing a little bit more and it was slowly trending upwards. I found that I had to post at least for 30 days consistently, around the same time every day, post a reel, make sure I'm on the stories. Stories does appear after 24 hours. So I was trying to post a story in the morning and afternoon. So then there was a story, at least one story there. Whenever someone looked at Instagram and could see I was there in people's minds. So that really helped as well. But my biggest regret from that time period was not setting up my email list. Shopify, which I use for my website. However, I didn't realize this at the time, but you can actually go into the orders and pre-select people join your mailing list. So I did that only recently in 2024. So I probably missed out on thousands and thousands of customers that could have been on that mailing list, but they aren't. <laughs> the mailing list is great because you'll be actually able to email people, let people know when there's a launch on or like when there's something important happening. And if you do have issues with like your social medias where, you know, you can't be seen by everyone, it won't matter as much because the people that actually want to see your stuff and are interested in your stuff, they're going to be able to see it through the emails. So even if you're just starting out, definitely make sure that you look into email marketing. Old as the internet really, but it does work and it's great to get those subscribers that actually want to see your stuff. People can always opt out. So continuing on on my journey, so after I've posted consecutively for 30 days straight and with the reels that were sort of low effort reels, I suppose, like stuff that I literally just set up my camera and just took pieces from it. So you guys could do that too, even if you're not a vlogging channel, you could just set up your phone and have it filming while you're making stuff. And then you can take snippets from that. You don't have to speak to the camera. You don't have to specifically make reels just to post with trending audio. You can just show behind the scenes. I think more and more people are liking the behind the scenes stuff done with just your phone camera. It feels more organic and it feels more humanized, I guess, because when you're watching stuff and it's very like high and flashy, it just feels different. <laughs> so once I started taking a step back from being so obsessed, I guess, with making the content and just posting what I can, when I can, still once a day, but it was just, it was a very low effort thing. I tried to have everything already pre-made, pre, you know, all the audio selected, all the captions done, so then I could just go in to Instagram or YouTube and just post it. I found it really helped bring my Instagram back to life. Now, in saying that, I did have to stick with it for months. It took a long time for me to get seen again. Now, it could have been for a whole heap of different external factors, but I was just putting two and two together that I had this viral reel and then all of a sudden everything just dipped. So I had to go through Christmas and stuff just not being seen. Like I had 
very low sales on my Black Friday sales, which usually every year gets hundreds of orders and just stuff like that. I just kept posting and trying to get seen. After a while, I just started going up again. So for a while, I was dipped under. I was losing followers by the thousands. It was just going really far under. And then all of a sudden it just started, you know, plateauing. I was gaining as much as I was losing and then it started going slowly back up. And now I'm sitting at 110,000. Actually, it's more than that. I think it's like 111K or something. And I've sort of like gotten rid of those followers that weren't really interested in my content, recovered by people that are interested. They want to see what I'm doing. They want to see how I'm doing it. They're interacting with my posts, they're like liking, they're commenting, and it has helped. Obviously, everyone's experience with Instagram will be different. I've had an Instagram account for 10 years and it took me 10 years to get to 100K. I had a very slow start to Instagram. I only hit 10K seven or six years in, six years in, I think. And then it was like a slow build until it wasn't but that's just my experience with going viral most recently i did have a video on facebook actually go viral i could definitely tell that it wasn't to the people that really probably should have been seeing it because i did have some weird comments like you know what is this what are you doing um why is this in my feed but it wasn't like too mean or rude so it's fine my biggest tips and my i guess my biggest takeaway from what I was just saying. Not all viral videos are going to bring you in like a bunch of followers that actually want to see your stuff. They may actually do more damage than good and you can't really stop it from happening. And just because someone has quite a lot of followers doesn't necessarily mean that they're equating to orders either. Tip on email marketing, make sure you set up an email list early on in your business and try and get people to subscribe so then the people that actually want to see your stuff is going to be able to see it because you just never know with social media is just always changing and evolving and it can be super hard to compete on there. Try not to burn yourself out with making content. It can, it is a full-time job in itself. A lot of thought goes into it and a lot of get yourself ready to like film and be in the right mood for it and then you got to like plan. It's a lot. So if you have the ability to sort of film things like just behind the scenes or something you can just set your camera up or phone up and just film and then take snippets from that it will make your life so much easier when creating content and then of course try and post every day which is easier said than done don't get me wrong i started trying to schedule my posts in advance i just use like instagram and the actual apps and i have everything ready to go on there like all the audio pre-selected like the video all made up like the captions done so then I can either schedule it so it posts automatically or I can just go in and post it just like that. I do find with Instagram, it typically doesn't post to Facebook when I do that, but I haven't tried it in a while, so I'll have to try it again. But just doing everything like that all at one hit for a month is going to save you so much time and you'll be able to see your account grow. I know a lot of people say quality over quantity, but I'm still a firm believer in you're your own harshest quality critic and the stuff that you think that might not be quality someone else is going to find so helpful or just love it some of my most viral things uh recently have literally just been me cutting fabric or like the sounds of stuff me folding fabric even for me personally i think more just post it like one of the videos that went viral on tiktok recently was just someone with strawberries and some chocolate on top you know and just because you think something's not valuable doesn't mean someone else will think the same. You are your own harshest critic. So I do hope that what I said was, I don't know, valuable in some way to some of you. Or if you just muted me to watch me fold fabrics, that's okay too. I thought I'd share my experience on going viral and how sometimes it's not always what it's chalked up to be. Anyway, I'm gonna keep folding these fabrics. So you're welcome to stay for that. If not, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you guys have experienced something similar or if you disagree, I guess, as well. But yeah, this is just like my personal experience with everything like that. But let's keep folding.
Well, I do have a couple more things to roll, but I think I'm just gonna end the video here. So I'd just like to say thank you so much for watching. I do hope that my ramblings might be beneficial to you. I don't know. <laughs> and anyway, yeah, thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.